you've seen the title, so you know that this is leading to us building our own upscaler. And yes, the final result will be quite interesting, but the real story behind how this works is much more beautiful if we can just look in between the pixels. Let's kick things off with this picture of my girlfriend's cat. Digital images like this consist of pixels, and these pixels are made up of different components. To upscale or downscale an image, we need to take the existing information and either cram it to fit a smaller space where we lose the data, or we need to create new data to fill in the gaps. My question is simple. Is there a mathematical way to do this and approximate it? Can we make it more accurate? And can we make it computationally fast? One way we could do this is to take our existing data, spread it out, and then copy the data that is closest, our nearest neighbor. This form of upscaling does not really create any new data, but it is useful for things like pixel art or just transforming an image without really changing anything about it. We can think of this as a step function, and all of our points are in the center of each step. And whenever we want to make a bigger image, all we have to do is sample more points on this line. Now, the reason why we started with this graph in particular is because it leads directly into the next idea. What if instead of steps, we just draw a straight line through all of the dots? Then we can do the same sampling as before and try and match this line as best as possible. But then our next natural question is, what is the equation that tells us what each pixel should be? And even further, how do we apply this to a full image? Let's imagine that we have two pixels and we need to fit one pixel in between them. We can take both of their values and add half of their values together to get an averaged pixel. You can then do this across an entire image horizontally and vertically to get a final result. But how would we do this if we needed to add two or three pixels or a random number of pixels in between? Let's go back to that linear interpolation example from before. What we can do is we can take fractional pieces of each pixel and then add them together to get a final result. And in 2D, this would be called bilinear interpolation, where we take four pixels surrounding it and then add them together to get that result. Now, this may look like a better example, and it really is, but if we try and scale this up massively, like a hundred times, it becomes very blurry, and you can kind of see little areas and pockets of extra data that we don't want. There is, however, one more thing we can do before we have to go find some more complicated algorithms. What if instead of a straight line, we draw a curved line, a cubic line? This is just another way of averaging together our pixels, and as we can see, we get a slightly better result than we did before, especially when we try and upscale a hundred times. We have removed those linear artifacts, those lines that kind of just appear out of nowhere. And when we apply this to a real image, we can really see the difference. Now, before we move on to more complicated algorithms, we should probably learn how to apply this into actual code. So far, I've been doing this in Python. And what I did is I just had two big for loops that would loop through every single pixel and try and calculate based on the data from the source. You will quickly realize that this is a terrible idea because we're just computationally adding more and more and more every time we want to scale the image up. So what we need to do is find a way to make this parallel. We could use the GPU. In a very basic way, CPUs let us stack up new tasks and it can execute it one at a time. But with the GPU, we can give it an entire array or even a 3D array of different tasks, small math problems that we can have it calculate for us very quickly. Well, we know that our upscaling algorithm is really just simple math, adding together basic fractions. So if we can throw together an entire list of these to the GPU, the GPU can do this almost instantaneously. For now, I'm going to install CUDA, NVIDIA's provided way of interacting with your GPU, and I'm going to rewrite my script to paralyze it using this GPU. Now that we have an easy and fast way to interact with our GPU, we can now utilize that power on a much harder algorithm. The Lanchos algorithm is another way to upscale images, and it's also very famous. And it might look a little scary, but if we use this correctly, we might be able to get some slightly better results before jumping up onto something scary like neural networks. The way that the Lanchos filter works is it actually samples all the pixels around it, kind of like before 
but because it has a little bit more variation in how that works, we actually have more power on what we're actually averaging. It's called a kernel, and these kernels can give us the data that we need. Now, we're not going to get too deep into what that means, but the basic idea is that this is slightly better than the cubic method, and we can now move on to the next big step. How do we apply this to motion and moving video? Now, I want to be clear. There are two major versions of this. There's the one where you put it into a program and it will process all of the frames for you at once and output an MP4, or we can do it live like DLSS for GPUs. What we really wanna do is we wanna do it live, where we take in the video as we're watching it, process it with a little bit of a delay and spit out the upscaled frame to our screen as we're watching it. Now, as you might imagine, it's very easy to find a upscaler that will just spit out the video file, but it's pretty hard to find one that will do it for you as you're watching it. Actually, I haven't found one, but I'm sure there's one out there. So let's try and do this. Now, because Python's so slow, I am going to move over to Unity, so that way I can apply a shader to the video file. Now, shaders are just another fancy way of interacting with the GPU. And just because I'm using a game engine doesn't mean you could do this in anything else. It's just ease of use and knowing that this is not something that people normally do. So I'd rather use a program that I know by heart. So let's start by making a plane slash a video file thing. We're going to plug in the video file that we want to use, and then we're gonna use this shader in order to upscale it. But what's gonna be actually inside of this shader? Well, let's start with the Lanchos method and see how badly it runs. When I finally ran the program, the upsetting news is, is that it didn't really look like it did anything at all. And my computer wasn't running too great at the time. I think my fans decided to die too, which wasn't the best. But to be very honest with you, we kind of knew that this was not the answer. We need to upgrade, especially to something that may not need as much processing power, even if it might be lying to us in the end. I switched over to Unity's HDRP and enabled DLSS and started tweaking with all of the settings. And we actually started to get somewhere. However, I was only really getting worse and worse quality, not necessarily the better quality that I was looking for. So I kept banging my head against it. While past me was talking about that, let's talk about what DLSS actually is. What happened is, is that NVIDIA decided to throw your picture through a neural network, and on the outside came in that extra data that we've tried to predict before. Now, we used algorithms before, but a neural network is really just thousands and thousands of tiny algorithms adding together to basically form an output. So, Let's see if we can replicate a better image using this system. My input video file is 640 by 360 pixels, and I just want to see if I can make it look semi-good on my 4K monitor. However, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get the DLSS to actually look good. It is built for video games and not for video, but it does kind of suck that I wasn't able to get anything better than just a more blurry image. But. I think we did learn a lot today, specifically about upscaling algorithms, you know, through your normal methods, taking in a video, waiting a very long time, and then outputting a really nice file. It's nice to be able to do it faster, and it's nice to do it more accurately, but I think the Lantris filter is probably the winner today. But I think I had some fun. Thank you all for watching. Go break some stuff, like and subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh, join the Discord, because uh, there's a lot of cool people in there. Yeah.